5,000 years ago, an amazing discovery made possible the construction of the first pyramid on Earth. This story reveals how it was built using man-made stones, which look exactly like natural rocks. The limestone blocks were cast in place with the use of a technology called Arikat. I, Imhotep, the thrice great master of mysteries, set down for the guidance of those that are to come hereafter. This records the mighty accomplishments obtained during the kingdom of Pharaoh Joseph. My father, who was the master architect of the reign, decided that I would not become an army officer or part of the kingdom's administration, but instead should search for knowledge as a priest. Therefore, I entered the close circle of the guardians of wisdom. When I was very little, I remember my mother take me down the Nile, the river of life, to my new home at the temple of Anu. In this center of science and religion, in its great library, I learned how to read and write in the language of symbols that perpetuates the wisdom of my people. As time went by, I studied temple design, as well as building techniques, geometry, medicine, and everything that my wise ancestors had been able to fathom during thousands of years about the structure of the universe. Up in the terrace, under the sky vault, I learned how to calculate time using Earth's position in relation to the star constellations. Understood that because of the influence celestial bodies have over the nature and the man, watching and registering their motion is very important. I was taught to recognize the essential qualities in different animals, like the hawk's sharp vision, the fox's cunningness and the lion's strength. I learned that each quality is represented by a deity, a human figure with the head of the animal that best embodies it. I remember the day when my master decided that I had achieved the level of knowledge required to enter one of the forbidden sectors of the temple. Very few had access to the most advanced and secretly kept information about alchemy, the powerful science of chemical reactions. Experienced alchemists worked there, agglomerating stone, shaping sacred vessels and statues. They had a very advanced technology, a secret formula to mix and mold rocks with small fragments and dust of different kinds of stone. Our people honored priests because of the scientific knowledge we constantly display and our ability to mold stone. For all of us, stone is a symbol of the eternal. The fire of wisdom burst into a consuming flame and Pharaoh Josser appointed me to act as master architect of the reign. We dreamt of building a great altar 
for the sun, a step pyramid made of eternal stone, so remarkably polished as to reflect the light of its rays. It had to be exceptionally high to honor it, so to express gratitude for its energy for miles around. I remember when I began to plan building it, I first thought I would have to cut and carve millions of stone blocks. But just for this work to be done, I needed thousands of men and many more to haul them from faraway mines to the building site. I calculated that to drag the larger rocks I would need the strength of about 2,000 men. To hoist them up I would also need huge ramps. But building the pyramid this way would be impossible. The ramp would use much more material than the pyramid itself. I would need hundreds of thousands of men working shoulder to shoulder in a very small space. I knew I had to find a simpler and more logical way to build, with much less workforce and a reasonable effort. The project would make us a great nation and make Pharaoh Joss's name eternal. I invoked Khnum, the deity represented by a blue man with ram's head. His essential quality is force, with which he condenses energy into matter, shaping all things created. I offered him a stone vessel and asked for his guidance to find a simple path that would allow me to give form to the pyramid. I found my inspiration examining soil in a place I later called Sakara, which means the one who guides and shows the way. I sensed that the solution was to copy and accelerate this process used by nature in the depths of the sea to solidify fossil remains of marine organisms and mud into very hard limestone rock. I found in Saqqara two different types of limestone formed when Egypt was submerged under the sea. The first one is a very hard limestone, the second soft, half-hardened and could be disaggregated very easily. When diluted with water it transforms into a muddy clay. If I discovered which ingredients should be added to this muddy clay to transform it into a very hard limestone, the problem would be solved. I would then be able to mold millions of limestone blocks, which having dried, would be exactly the same as natural rock. I wouldn't have to cut and carve very hard rock with malleable copper tools or haul heavy blocks from far away. If I find the formula to harden the soft limestone, I would be able to transport the materials in baskets and cast the blocks in molds. This would simplify the work so much that I would set up the pyramid with very few people and a reasonable effort. I began experimenting, adding different substances to the muddy clay, trying to find the formula to harden it quickly. I tried adding salt, a crystalline mineral found in seawater, which readily reacts with other minerals and most known substances. Then I added lime, a mineral which binds and solidifies other minerals. Lime is made up of ashes from burning fragments of the same limestone rock. Mixing lime with salt in water produced caustic soda, a corrosive substance that sparked off a strong chemical reaction between the clay and the lime, transforming both into a powerful binder and natural cement. I found a geological binder used by nature in the depths of the sea, which takes thousands of years to turn marine remnants into stone. 
but my mixture takes just 24 hours to solidify and 30 days to dry completely. I remember when I presented the first artificial stone to my sovereign, the Pharaoh Djoser. Although not very large, it was a tremendous scientific breakthrough. 